If you would like, if you have the urge to merge, if you'd like to be in partnership, the partnership doesn't start after. It starts before. It starts the moment you see and experience this person that you believe may be a good match for you. That's when the partnership starts. Blessings and blessings, beautiful soul. My name is Preston Smiles, and I help people get free from the inside out, regardless of their external circumstances. And today's podcast is about the real reason why men don't approach you. Now, I'm going to caveat all of this by saying that there are a multitude of reasons, but one of the main ones that I've noticed through coaching both men and women through the dating process and the relationship process is one that I believe is baked into the culture. Uh, and it is a new thing, not an old thing. It's a new thing that I believe women are doing. And I think it's a, a new thing that I believe men are doing. And so I'll start with women and then I'll go to men. Women, you ever seen one of those uh, old school movies where uh, the woman will be at a bar or something and she'll notice a man, he'll notice her, and then she'll drop her handkerchief. What she's doing in that moment is giving him an opportunity. She's signaling to him that it is safe for you to come over here and talk to me. Now, in this high pace low touch society that we have where we shop through Bumble and Tinder and all the other apps, we've lost the art of invitation. And I want to invite each and every one of you to play with this, even if you are in a partnership now. If you want your boyfriend, husband to approach you now, if you want him to come after you now, if you want to be ravished by him now, pay attention. You see, us men are very sensitive creatures. We may not show it directly, but most men have a, I'll say, a healthy fear of rejection. And uh, if it looks like walking up to you, slash coming towards you, slash uh, putting energy in your direction, may equal our egos being annihilated. Well, there's a lot of annihilation already happening in the world for men. And he's going to be calculating whether it's a good idea for him to add to that annihilation. So I invite slash remind you, beautiful, beautiful women. And I mean that from the inside out that you have a power, your feminine power. You have uh, a thing you can get to and play with that us men do not possess. It is one of the things that makes us so attracted to you, is that power. When you dull that power, when you suppress that power, when you box it up and you don't offer it as an exchange, when you don't... Uh, Make it clear through your energy, through your handkerchief that one can approach. Most men aren't going to approach. You know, I used to joke and say that in, in, uh, in college or, you know, out in the bar scene, there's only really two kind of guys. There's the guy that's like, Hey, here's my dick. And he's like super uber confident. And then there's the guy that's sitting back that's. A little more shy, a little more reserved, a little more, you know, he sees you, he recognizes you, he thinks you're beautiful, he thinks you're, you know, he, he, he likes what he sees and what he's experiencing of your essence. And that guy, if that's the one you want, he's going to need a few more signals. And one of the things I want to also challenge and remind all of us, this is men and women, is all of us can have um, inviting face or resting bitch face. And I'm talking about men and women here. And so if you know that you have like a more, a less inviting face, right? When your resting face looks like 
You're going to kill someone. If you want someone to come towards you, just biologically, it doesn't, if you want that person's nervous system to feel safe, you might want to just throw in a smile or give them a little look and like play with your energy and get in the, the, the mode of receiving. Unless you don't want to receive and you want to go get, if you want to go get them, go get them. Guys would love that. Do you know, guys would love that. Look, for those of you in a relationship right now, if you go towards your man, oh my God, he's going to burst. Because 99% of the time, he's in his mind going, I would love to kiss her, grab her butt, have sex with her, just hold her. And, you know, sometimes she bites my head off. Sometimes, you know, she's like, oh, it's my period. Or, you know, the dishes aren't washed. Because some people, um, in order for them to be intimate, and right? We're not talking about all the way sex. But if if the laundry is all over the floor, for some people, they can't be intimate until the laundry is put up. While my assessment of most men is it could be World War Seven. All he sees is you because he's in single focus while you're in diffuse focus. You're noticing everything. He's noticing one thing. And so lean towards, lean in if you would like that as well. Now, the new thing for men as well is they've become so used to shopping through these apps. And there's this idea that there's always something better down the road that again, the, the egoic, let's call it semi narcissistic, uh, dude is going to be in the conversation of, well, I'm a catch too. You should come to me. And that's some new school young dude stuff. And these guys don't really know how to talk to women, right? They're, they're so, computers and video games and phones that they've lost the art of conversation. And so uh, that guy is going to have a harder time approaching. Um, and then there's, there's the, the, the high value man who you think is attractive. He thinks you're attractive. He's still assessing whether your signals will equal success. Right, because men do things for points. We play for points, uh, whether we're conscious of it or not. And if he believes approaching you might equal his feelings being hurt, well, for the sake of his job and his energy and the basketball game he has later and all the other stuff, he probably is going to be a little more aware of what's going on. And again, our job is to help each other. Our job is to build bridges of understanding and love and connection. And while we don't want to go with societal norms of the man should approach me and the man should pay for dinner and this, that, and the other, I was watching Love is Blind the other day. And one of the women on there was saying how, you know, she believes that a man should pay for everything. And the guy was saying, oh, yeah, you know, 50-50 for the bills and 50-50 for this. And she was appalled by that statement. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of takes on it. There's a lot of takes on it. But the one that we need to pay most attention to is if you would like, if you have the urge to merge, if you'd like to be in partnership, the partnership doesn't start after. It starts before. It starts the moment you see and experience this person that you believe may be a good match for you. That's when the partnership starts. So will you be a good partner and throw your handkerchief? Will you be a good partner and make eye contact and soften your heart and get in receptive receiving mode? Will you be a good partner if you don't want to do that and lean in and walk towards and say, hi, hi, my name's Jesse. My name's Chrissy. My name's Susan. My name's whatever your name is and, and approach and start it. We're all in this together. And, uh, dating and relationship can be very tricky. So, uh, if, the, if you got value from this, I ask only one thing and that's for you to share it with at least one other person who you think would receive value from this. Blessings and blessings to every single one of you beautiful souls. My name is Preston Smiles, and I believe that love is all there is, was, and ever will be. And I also live by the creed that love will find a way. Everything else 
will find an excuse.